All right, guys, this video might seem totally random on my channel, but you would not believe the number of questions and comments I get about how I volumize my limp hair thinning hair. Like truly, I've been dealing with androgenetic alopecia for years. There is a method to the madness, I promise you. If you have hair like mine and it is stick straight, I can teach you right now how to make it voluminous, 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 voluminous. voluminous. <laughs> I can teach you right now how to make it voluminous and beautiful and fun. All right, so you guys are getting me raw with my hair wet right now. I don't normally have makeup on before I blow my hair dry because it ruins my makeup, but I'm doing it now. Um, so here's the reality. This video is actually a, an interesting video for me to shoot because I am, hair has always been a thing that I'm super insecure about. My hair is fine. It's limp. I've dealt with hair thinning, with hair loss, the androgenetic alopecia. Uh, but I, I've made do, I have, and I believe fully that it is all in the process and the products that I use. Um, I'm gonna give you a couple options for everything that I do, but it starts with shampoo. It truly does. It is like not just a thing, how do I blow dry? It's how I blow dry, what I use on my hair to blow dry, how I shampoo, how I condition. So we're gonna talk through all of those steps today. I've mentioned before, that every other time I blow dry my hair or every other time I wash my hair, which, hold on, I gotta say this first. So I've mentioned before that I try to wash my hair as often as possible. When you have fine hair like mine, it is important that you scrub the scalp as often as possible. Um, so I would say I do about once every other day. So every two days, I scrub my scalp. One every other time that I wash, I actually use a hair loss shampoo. I'm not saying this is the one. This is the only one I have tried. So every other time I wash, I use this. But here's the thing. When I use this, it is more for my scalp, for the health of my scalp that will keep my hair healthy and blow drying nicely. My hair is not gonna perform well when I use this. So just know this. The times that I'm actually trying, I will plan ahead and if I need my hair to be nice, I'm gonna do a volumizing conditioner or shampoo and conditioner for my hair. Uh, to preface that, I have extensions. So I have extensions for thickness. Even with this hair, there are extensions. There are one and a half rows of extensions. So I'm gonna shampoo and condition my extensions with different shampoo than I condition and shampoo my real hair. There's a lot that goes into this. Uh, so for my real hair, I start there. I will get a good volumizing shampoo. Quality is key here. I have two that I found that I really love. Honestly, I do not love many others. Living Proof is one that I've used for many years. Not an ad, none of this is an ad. I do love Living Proof. Uh, my hairdresser just started making the um, Amiamo, whatever that is. This is really good too. It's actually gone. So I reverted back to this. This is great, super reliable. I'm gonna shampoo. So what I do is I put some in my hair, I shampoo the top, right? And then I section it up like this in the shower. So you can see my row of extensions. And I'm going to shampoo with, this is a different shampoo than the other. So this is volumizing. Then I'm gonna get a moisturizing, like a deep conditioning conditioner and a moisturizer. And I'll shampoo the bottom part, my extensions with this. So real hair with this, extensions with this, because extension hair is dead, right? Then wash, scrub, let that run out. I'll do the same with condition. I condition the top of my hair with a full conditioner and very lightly, just the ends, because I do not want it to go to my scalp. And then I do the bottom of my hair, the fake hair, the extensions, deep conditioner. Do not ever let a deep conditioner touch your real hair if you want volume. <laughs> it will not happen. After I wash it out really nicely, again, that's huge. If there's anything left over, your hair is gonna be greasy. You're not gonna be able to get volume. Uh, then I'm gonna do, if I need, I'm gonna do a little bit of like a detangler. I have a couple different ones. This is a tried and true as well. It needs to be one for, if you have fine limp hair, you're gonna wanna find one that's not too heavy. Just one, two, three, like three squirts, done. I brush it out now. Uh, the brush that you use is also important when you have fine hair and the way that you brush your hair out. So let me go ahead and show you. Where's my clip? Here it is. I get a clip. I'm going to section my hair. Again, I have one and a half rows. So I'm going to go first. I already brushed my hair today, but I'm going to go first like this. And I take this and I just start nice and gently 
being very careful with your hair, brushing all the way around. So we're getting everything nice and straight. Then I do everything in sections, even blow dry. Here's the deal. Even if I wasn't, if I didn't have extensions, I would still do my hair in sections. I did prior, then I take and I section, I brush out that second layer, just like this, right? Nice and even, flat to my head. And then I start with the top, getting that nice and even. My hair is drying just a little bit, just like this. Now the next thing I'm gonna do, when I'm ready, make sure you have a good blow dryer too. Blow dryers are very important. I love this one. I've used a handful. When this dies, I'm gonna use another one. But a quality blow dryer is everything. This is um, the, I don't know, Ibiza something or other if you wanna get it. Really like it. Uh, I want to make sure before I start blow drying, I have a good quality round brush in hand. Do not use a small round brush if you're wanting volume and you have short hair. If you're wanting volume and you have long hair, I would get an even bigger round brush than this. I love this one. Uh, at the hair salon, they use a little bit wider one that is metal and it has bristles. This is just one, whatever you've gotten used to. And the thing is, I realize over time, um, even if it's hard to use at first, you'll get used to it and it will become the thing that you love. This is the best for my short hair, hands down. Okay, so this, I then am going to take, this is uh, either one of these two. These are my two favorite that I found. This is a root boost and a root boost is going to help boost your root. But here's the thing, like a deep conditioner or like a detangler, if you're using too much, it's going to weigh your hair down. So I alternate. One will be really good for a while. My hair will get used to it. So I'll alternate to the other. That is the key for me in almost everything that I do. Again, living proof, really great one. This Orbe called like Maximista is a really good one too. Um, I'm going to use, I used this one last, so I'm going to go with this, if this spray, and I just, nice and easy, hold on, We're, this sprayer is a little bit bad, we're going to go with this one. I just spray one, two, three, one, maybe one in the front and one on the side. That's all that I do. I do not do a lot, and then I rub it around to spread it into my root for just enough volume. Now I'm gonna blow dry the top of my hair last. I'm gonna start with the bottom because the bottom is the extension hair and also I want the volume to start from down lower. So I'm gonna section, I do my very top layer first or bottom layer. I'm gonna pin that up. You can see about, I'm getting the extension row and the hair that's underneath of it. And then I'm just gonna take this round brush and my blow dryer, I keep it on high heat for the extension hair, and then I'm gonna transition to low heat or medium heat for my real hair, cool? One thing I will do as well, you'll see me pulling out this brush that I have right here to kind of dry it ahead of time before I get to the round brush part. So this is gonna help give it lift and smooth texture. This is just to help comb through it to get it dry faster. Okay, now that my hair is getting a little bit drier, I'm gonna pull out the round brush to smooth it out and give it that nice volume with the round edges. So you'll notice what I did right there. I blow dry the hair all the way through to the end. I stop, I curl it under, I'll blow dry the top, I'll go under, blow dry the bottom, sometimes lift it up and get the root, let it sit, and then go down. And sometimes I'll use the blow, blow dryer to go down like this. So watch me do this. Throw it up. Blow dry to the end. Nice and easy. Same thing on this side. See how this side has a nice, smooth, soft curl under? Uh, we'll do the same over here. Oh, 
Okay, so I'm gonna feel that layer. Feels like it's pretty good. So this layer is one of the most important to me because it kind of gives the foundation for everything else. So now that that layer is done, I'm gonna take this and section it one more time to the second like half layer of extensions. They're super thin, but they're right there. There we go. And here I'm gonna do the exact same thing. Start with this. Okay, so the first and second layer is done. I'm gonna put the blow dryer down for a sec, get my hair out. It's gonna feel a little bit crusty because of the stuff that I put in. Now, the way that I do this, I'm gonna take the front section. I learned this from Chrissy, my hairstylist. You take rows, starting with the front, and you're gonna blow dry and round brush everything forward up until I get to about here. So you'll see this. I take sections, rows, round brush forward. I'm gonna hit the underside with heat, hit the top side with heat, and let it fall down. Cool, and what that's gonna do is when I push my hair back, or let it fall to the side, it's gonna give it the volume because I have trained it with the blow dryer to go the opposite direction that it's actually naturally gonna lay. Cool, and then it'll go to the back and I'll actually do that a little bit different. But, all right, this is also the time where I drop to medium heat. So I'm gonna push that top one to medium because this hair is a lot more delicate and brittle and I have to be super careful. All right, I'm gonna turn toward you a little bit more so you can see this. So I'm gonna section that top part just like this uh, get this brush ready. There are some stragglers. I'm gonna get them when I come back through, but for now I'm just gonna get this ready. Set the blow dryer on medium heat. Then what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna hit it with a cold shot. So every blow dryer has this cold shot like this. Turn it back on. To help it set. All right, now that I've gotten the front pieces out, I'm gonna start doing the back towards the back. Okay, I've gotten the back, the top, the back, and the bottom done. Now it's time to go to the side, starting with the front, kind of blow drying this first piece forward and a couple pieces around it. Still on medium heat. That is how I get volume in my hair. Now I will also add curls, depending on what I have going on that day, sometimes the next day. But another key is during the day, after you've blow dried, I, if my hair starts to, if I have it parted on the left, an hour or two later, I'm gonna flip it to give it volume to fight against the part that it was just sitting on. Another key, find a good dry shampoo, that you can spray just enough as your hair starts to feel limp. Spray just enough into the roots to give it some volume that you need. I'm not gonna mess with mine right now. Sometimes I'll do it right after I blow dry, but I am feeling like the volume in my hair is great. Uh, for those of you that have a hard time with the back of your hair or feel like you need more volume, you can always take a little section, tease it just like this, down the back. Not too much because hair is brittle. And then I kind of brush over the top, just like that. That is the base of the volume. I'm gonna show you now how I do my curls. Okay, so now that I have volume at the root of my hair, at the base, I can either let it stay straight for a day and know that it's gonna have volume and add a little bit of dry shampoo for texture when it flattens out, or I can add some curls to it. Now, I do my curls different than they do in the salon. I do. They usually say to switch directions. I do all one direction on both sides. Uh, the first thing you're gonna wanna start with is a really good inch and a quarter, if you have short hair, inch to inch and a quarter 
uh, curl stick or curling iron. This is the one that I've been using for a while. I love it. I have a couple different variations of this Hot Tools one, but there are some other really great ones out there. I will say a cheaper curling iron is not gonna allow your hair to hold curl as long if you have fine hair like mine. Trust me, I have learned the hard way. Okay, so what you're gonna do is just like with the blow drying, you're gonna section your hair without dampening the volume that you've already added. So I just kind of nice and loosely, see that? I like let it have the volume and I'm gonna curl pretty quickly because I do not want my curls to be perfect. I just wanna give it some extra volume. So I'm gonna start from the front. Let me actually push this up. Starting from the front, I do smaller sections and I'm just gonna go like this, curl the hair. Okay, so I got one side done. Flip into the other side so you can kind of see this a little bit better. You're gonna section smaller pieces. I'm getting all of the real hair at once. Sometimes they say to mix the real hair and the fake hair. If you have fake hair, I do all of my real hair in the front at the same time because it curls differently and I have to hold it in there a little bit less time. Uh, big key, go backwards away from your face, leaving a little bit of hair out and then slowly allow the curling iron to slide down. Here we go, let me show you this again. Sometimes if I feel like the round brush edge is too much, I'm gonna straighten it. I don't want those ends super curled under, just enough, cool, just like that. And then I am always, always gonna leave about an inch, half inch, three quarters of an inch, sometimes a little more out, and then roll it down. I like a little bit straighter edge. I think it looks better when everything is super curled under. I feel like I'm eight years old and it's not my style. Uh, I'm gonna grab another section. Again, moving the same direction, flatten it out a little, moving the same direction away from my face. I'm gonna leave a little bit out just to give it a bend. Hold it, twist it, pull it on down to the end just like that. Now, some stylists will tell you to go, now start going in opposite directions. So if you go away from your face, go toward. It doesn't work for my hair as well as it does for other people's. So I go everything away from my face, everything. Like this. And plus, because I like to uh, add curl the next day, if I've curled one piece the wrong direction and I'm trying to curl it an opposite direction, it does not curl the same the next day. So at least for me, I know everything on my right is curled back, everything on my left curled back, much easier for days ahead. The back starts to get a little bit difficult because the hairs are shorter. You just do your best more than anything to add volume at the bottom of your hair. Okay, so I have a nice base. These are gonna be tousled out, tousled out, whatever toss, I don't even know. Uh, they're gonna be separated. Now I'm gonna do another section, getting my all my real, real hair, keeping a nice little puff for volume, pinning it to the top like this. And I'm gonna do that next layer of my extension hair combined with the real hair that's with it. And the best part about it is when you're done with your hair being curled, when you're done curling your hair, uh, sometimes it doesn't manage very well. Give it an hour, let it settle down, and your hair will be better than ever the rest of the day. And no, if you have long hair, this is literally the exact same way I would curl your hair. I like to leave a little bit out, gives it a beachier look than um, curling the entire strand. Like a more like, did she uh, wake up like that or did she actually do her hair today look? And I like it. And keep in mind when you're doing this, the hairs, the curls do not need to be perfect. Sometimes having pieces that are straighter, like this one's not complying today over here. You see that? Uh, but it adds to everything looking really great at the end. 
if you just kind of go with it. Okay, so we are done with those curls. Now we're gonna finish off with the top. I do a middle part when I'm doing the top. That way I can flip it back and forth. Somewhere I'm gonna get some flyaways and that's okay because I think for me it adds to the look that is just fun and gives it volume and all that kind of stuff. Sometimes it's a pain for shoots, right Nick? <laughs> but for everyday life, it's great. Take a nice section. So this front piece, I'm gonna get about a, an inch on the front. This is like the piece that means the most because this is what you're gonna see, everybody's gonna see. There we go, just like that. And I let it settle while I do the next couple pieces. Other side, front piece, that's the money piece. So then, after I get what I feel is all of my hair, I just take my hands and mess it up a little bit, just like this. So I just take my hands, mess it up, look in the mirror to find what I like. Sometimes I'll even put it back to the center to see if any pieces need a little extra, like this one, maybe I'll do a little extra. Honestly, it doesn't need it, but if I'm worried about it lasting throughout the day, I'll throw it in, just a nice little piece at the top. This side did not curl as well today. I don't know why, but that's okay. There we go. Adding a tighter curl, I'm gonna tighter, tightly curl the front a little bit more. <clears throat> and one more loose one at the top. And then I'm not considering the back right now, I'm just showing you guys the front. And there we have beachy fun hair. This is how I get the volume in my fine, limp, Hair. Now remember, if throughout the day this starts to feel flat, all I'm gonna do is push it to the other side and zhuzh it with my hands, just like that. And it doesn't look perfect, but that's the look that I'm going for. So I hope this helped. I hope this answered all of your questions about how to get volumized hair when it is fine, it is limp, maybe you're dealing with hair loss. That's how I do it. If you want more videos, please make sure you subscribe and comment below telling me what you want to see next.